Hi, this is Cherry Ma on the red carpet for FS's new drama starring Tom Hardy, Taboo. I cannot wait to talk to some of the cast and creators behind this new spooky drama. Now, if you've seen the photos, you've seen Tom decked out in black and white with feathers, looking like a witch doctor. And of course, we've seen the photo where he's rising out of a pool of water shirtless. I must admit, I've watched that photo a couple of times. <laughs> he's very sexy. But this show looks like a major drama, good fit for FX. He was lost in Africa doing goodness only knows what was happening, but he's come back to his family in England where they have a business transporting and he's taking revenge upon his enemies. Now we don't know who his enemies are, we don't know what they did, but from what the commercials say, they deserve everything they have coming to them. So let's hopefully get a chance to talk to some of the cast and team and get ready to watch the premiere this coming January 10th. This is Cherry and I'm on the red carpet for FS's Taboo. How are you enjoying being cast in this new spooky drama Taboo? Between you and me, I'm loving it, babes. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's dark and it's dangerous and it's unpredictable and it's fab. It's just different from most things you will see on television, isn't it? I think it's quite challenging. Challenging for an audience as well as us, and I love that. You know. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your character? Because it's under such wraps. I've heard a little bit about it, but I don't really know anybody on it. He's very loyal. He's very loyal to the family. He's worked for them all his life as a manservant. And now he becomes Tom's manservant when he comes back from Africa on the death of his father. Um, he's extremely loyal to him and loves him, loves him dearly because he's known him since he was a boy. You cannot take that loyalty away from him, but to a fault. Because you find out when the series unravels how he shouldn't perhaps have been that loyal. It's a large departure from the type of show that you normally work on. What really attracted you to the script when you first saw it? And the intrigue, the darkness, the, the danger inherent within it. I love it. You just think, where's this going to go next? Where is it? it? It's not pat in any way. It's not laid out before you. It, it twists and turns and surprises you and challenges you uh, when you read the script, challenges you as an audience. Hope. I've only ever seen one episode. I've only seen episode one, so I don't know how the rest of it pans out. Well, I'm excited to be meeting it and seeing it for the first time with you. Congratulations on Taboo. Thank you, and lovely to meet you. Nice first, to meet I'd you. like to congratulate you on the show. Thank you. Now, what's it like working on Taboo? It, uh, uh, it's been fantastic and working with FX has been fantastic and BBC are famously um, they leave you alone do you know what I mean that's the great thing that they do is they say okay you've got eight hours fill it do something um, so the, the whole process creatively the whole process has been fantastic since you've already shot it can you give me a little bit of a clue as to how you guys plotted out the series as well as tying in the spookiness, the mysteryness, mysteryness of it, and the general sexiness of Mr. Hardy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I always like to um, to write things where even a smart viewer doesn't know what's going to happen next, and if they think they know what's going to happen next, it isn't that isn't what's going to happen. So, you know, I'm trying to be where possible, sort of realistic in the way that in real life all sorts of weird things happen and they're not part of a pattern and nobody's writing it down and, and I, I, I like it when the story feels real and these things happen completely incongruously and, and not on cue and so you don't really know where it's going to go. Now tying it into the time period it looks visually scrumptious yeah. but it has like a different cadence from the way that people talk nowadays. How did you sort of get their voices? Um, it's what I try to do is to uh, to take the step that people then were the same as people now in terms of they loved, they hated, they were jealous, they were angry, the same as we are, and so the emotions should feel very modern, and the characters should feel modern, but they express themselves in a way that is slightly different. It's it's not that formalised sort of sub Shakespearean thing that we're quite used to in period dramas. It's something different to that. So hopefully it does feel more familiar to a modern audience. 